He's the master builder. Or else you're going to be building upon sand. The sands of time where the winds and the waves wash all those little castles away. <laughs> but if you build by the Spirit, Shabbat. Jesus said, my words are spirit life. Though, you know, the word of God will not pass away. Whatever God builds through you will not pass away. It's fruit that remains. Hallelujah. You need to have Christ written on your forehead. That's it, like this big C here. Oh, that's backwards. My camera to... Shut up. You need to project Christ through your mind like those sharp lenses that let in all the light. Let the light have his way. Let the light be the light of the world through you. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Not just my Savior, but the more he's magnified, those are, you and your house shall be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't worry about it. Just shine the light. That also means like not just your family house, but how about you and your house? <laughs> Healed, saved, delivered. Oh, uh, you give your house over to the Lord. It's His. It's His. It's His temple. Shut Man, nah, there's a lot of glory. Hard to keep a, it's hard to keep a sad face. <laughs> oh man! Even, even when I'm weeping because of wickedness, it feels good. It's like I don't know. It's like you're sharing with the Lord in His sufferings, and you're reigning with Him in glory. It's like. You, 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 wickedness grieves God because He wants everyone to experience His life. Wickedness, it's like it, it, it caps you off from life. God is life. And He wants you to have life and life more abundantly. Wave upon wave upon wave upon wave upon wave upon wave, upon wave of life waves of glory to just carry your soul <laughs> through the ocean of his love he wants to carry just send out your, your your earth suit is just a sail for the Lord to blow through he carries you wheresoever he wills brings life to whosoever is hungry you bring the bread of life holy Holy, <sighs> I'm drowning in this caramel anointing. <laughs> you should too. You should too. Just receive the presence of the Lord. Take your focus off of me. Take your focus off of the audio and the video right now. Let's exercise. Let's practice the presence of God right now. Put your heart there, right there. There he is. There he is. God, I release your peace in my spirit into this place into this place, God. As surely as you live, your glory will fill the whole earth and through the gates of the earth to overflow into every dimension. There you are, Lord. From the beginning of time, past the beginning of time, there you are. Past the end of time, there you are. In this little ruler that we see called time, you filled it with your presence. You filled it with your peace. This measuring stick. And we can be accelerated in one day 
is like a thousand years of your manifest presence. But we miss one day and it's like a thousand years wasted. I don't want to waste any more years and centuries, God. There you are. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let just increase, thicken your presence, Lord. Thicken your presence. Thicken your presence, God. Thicken, thicken, thicken the presence. <laughs> Make us sharpen the spirit, Lord. Make us sharpen the spirit. Focus on the author and the finisher of our faith. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen is now seen in you. We follow you in the Spirit. We live in the Spirit. We follow you. Just keep practicing. Take your focus off me. Put it, even if you have to stop the video, put your focus on Him, the King of Kings. Practice the presence. That's your life. That's your life. See, like a stop sign. Some of you need to stop. It's a sign. <laughs> you obey them in the natural. Some of you need to stop everything that you are doing. And it's red. Just get through the blood of Jesus. Wash away all the death. Wash away the dead works. And when the light turns green again, rest. Just rest in His green pastures. He'll anoint your, your... Your head's already anointed with oil. It's Jesus Christ Himself. He said, I have nowhere to rest my head. Let Him find a resting place on you. Let Him rest on you. The shoulders, the body of Christ, those who are closest to the head are government. You want to be government? You've got to be close to the head. Attached. You gotta be close and hear what he says and do what he says. <laughs> it's fun. If you love me, you'll do what I say. That's a key. Not a threat. It's a key. <laughs> if you love me, oh, you'll do what I say. open. Hallelujah. Someone's getting it. Sheba. <laughs> they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Why? Their strength. <laughs> comes from the joy of the Lord. God is really happy. And you wait upon Him. Look what happened to Zacchaeus. He climbed up on a tree. He wanted to see Jesus for who He was. Not by what He heard who He was. He wanted to see Jesus Himself. So He broke through the press of people and Pharisees. He broke through the press. Climbed up on a tree. This position is very valuable right here. As he waited, Jesus came up to him. It's one thing to be crucified. Yeah, we die daily, but what about what comes after the crucifixion? How about resurrection life? Jesus comes up to him. Zacchaeus followed the protocol. He's like on this cross, on the tree. Galatians chapter 3 talks about what a tree is. Cursed is anyone who's hung on a tree. Blah, blah, blah. Zacchaeus 
I must abide at your house today. Why? Because he broke through the busyness of life. He didn't want to do stuff for Jesus. He wanted Jesus himself. He wanted to see who Jesus was himself. It's not good enough to be a foolish virgin to get just receive from other pastors and just never see Jesus for yourself. It's, a, it's foolish to depend on other people for your relationship with God to get oil. you got to go to Him yourself. Like a wise virgin. Today I must abide. How about the abiding presence of Jesus? That's your house. Have you died to yourself? So that until Jesus, the manifest presence, the living God shows up, and speaks to you so you can hear his voice in your heart or natural he might speak audibly he has a couple times to me not very many very rare for me it's just where I'm at right now I'm still growing and uh, he told him to come down <laughs> get off that tree man <laughs> I must abide at your house bro and so Zacchaeus comes off the tree He's talking face to face with Jesus and all the Pharisees around him are murmuring and complaining that Jesus has gone to be the guest with a sinner. All that judgmental Pharisee demon stuff, it's nothing new under the sun. All the fun is in the sun, S-O-N. So they're all judging him and murmuring and gnashing their teeth and they're probably calling him a wolf in sheep's clothing because uh, he's, he's a sinner and... <laughs> They're looking on the outward appearance and they don't know that he's having a transformation just by spending time getting closer to Jesus than they are because he's face to face with Jesus so they're from a distance murmuring and complaining. Sound familiar? Peter warming his hands, you know. <laughs> and he denied him. But that's what happens. you got to get closer to Jesus. you got to get closer to him and hang on to his pant legs. Where you go, I go. Where you, you know, where you die, I die. I'm gonna die on the cross with you. But there's resurrection life past the cross. Hallelujah! Death and hell can't keep Jesus in the grave. Get yeah, real. And then Zacchaeus is rejoicing, or actually Jesus is rejoicing because he's he's pretty jacked up. One sheep has come home. <laughs> All the angels are probably just doing skip to do my daddy or whatever you call that dance. I don't even know what you call that dance. <laughs> They're happy in heaven because the lost sheep has come home. And, uh, and Zacchaeus is like repenting just by being in the manifest presence of Jesus. He's like, if I ripped anyone off, I'm going to restore them four, fourfold, you know. <laughs> I'm going to restore... I want to make everything right just because when I come into your presence, I just feel like I want everything to be right with you. I don't want this presence to leave. I want to do everything I can to please you. I want everything in my life to reflect you. And Jesus was rejoicing. And although the Pharisees were murmuring and complaining in the background, Zacchaeus didn't turn to them. He stood face to face with Jesus. Because they're just a distraction to pull you away from him, to argue. You don't need to pay attention to the words of dead without resurrection power. Only pay attention to the words of resurrection life. Don't pay attention to the words of death, the words of the knowledge of good and evil, the opinions and strifes of men, the debates of Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the flesh. You want the tree of life. You want that. Or else you wouldn't have made it this far in the video. I I made it real simple. You know, you know what this whole message is about? Love Jesus. <laughs> Let's get, let's, let's get a little bit closer to Jesus today. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't need any man to teach you. Let's just get jacked up on Jesus. <laughs> let's get closer to God. Let's get as close to God as we can. Until our 
face falls off, and his face pops through there. Let's get so close to the Father's heart that our heart just gets replaced by the consuming fire of his heart. Let's get so close to God that righteousness just permeates through us. Let's get so close to God that evil falls off. Let's get so close to God that the light of the world starts shining through us. Let's give so much of our hearts to God that it's His heart to heal the body. There's nothing else in this world worth putting your focus on than God. You need to have a sharp lens that lets in a lot of light so that you can see clearly and quickened by your by the Holy Spirit. He'll quicken your spirit. But you got to let in the let in the light of the gospel. Jesus Christ himself. You have to have the drink, the cup of the new covenant in his blood, his flesh, his life. Manna come down from heaven to feed all of mankind. It may like he broke himself and scattered himself throughout all the disciples to feed the multitudes. Five loaves and two fish. Five is grace. It's grace that Jesus was broken for you. It's grace that the disciples could just release what God has given to Jesus to give to them, to give to the people who are hungry. You cannot be the light of the world if you do not have the light shining through you. And you can check that measure by how many demons manifest on you. They're usually religious Christians who are walking in darkness and they need to be healed. Saved, healed, and delivered. And so you just stand your holy ground. I, I, sometimes I block them because I just see pride. And you can't, talk, you can't teach pride nothing. Other times... I just like I, I engage with them and and I just realize like whoa I was I was like that myself and we're all going from glory to glory so you just like you just feed them bread and wine the best you can and and project Christ on them <laughs> hallelujah through your heart and you just all the arrows that fly hit you and just pull them out pour in the wine for cleansing and the oil for healing and just keep walking with Jesus above the storms of life and there will be many that you know fall by the wayside there will be many that will see a great light Christ in you the hope of glory and they'll desire him more than their own life and they will shrug off the works of darkness they will shrug off their idols and follow him There's nothing, you know, <laughs> great patience is the fruit of the Spirit. I thank God that, you know, it is the fruit of His Spirit. And you, you grow the fruit of His Spirit by resting in His Spirit. Every day. Listen, the bread of His presence is for every day. You just got to get out of the way. It's called daily bread, you know, <laughs> the bread of His presence. Receiving food, revelation, his words. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Just, if you don't know how to eat, open your mouth, and he will fill it with honey from the rock. Open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and speak your heart, what God has put inside of you. And just, and if you have trouble with that, just read the Bible out loud. And just, but read it with the mind of Christ. And uh, just focus your heart 100% on Him. And His heart will come through your heart. Because it's His heart, if you've given it to Him. Okay, well, my battery's about to die. <clears throat> I just, I run these things off batteries. My camera. <laughs> um, but there's a power that will never run out. You need to tap into Him. And uh, I just pray that you be His friend. 
Be his love slave, fine. If you want to be a slave of God, be his love slave. <laughs> the greatest desire of my heart is to be his friend. Is just to walk with him in the cool of the day. The greatest desire in my heart is to be God's friend. I want to get so close to him that I don't, I'm not distracted by Pharisees. I'm not distracted by the world. I'm not even distracted by myself because I'm so consumed with just laying my head on his chest. I'm so consumed with just hearing his whispers. I'm so consumed by the fire of his love. I'm so consumed by just looking at the fire in his eyes and melting my eye sockets so that his eyes can come through my eyes. I only want to see what he sees. And if it means seeing wickedness in the world and breaking my heart, then so be it. I'll share in his sufferings and I'll share in his glory. I want to be close to my best friend. Nothing else matters. Nothing. Nothing else matters but to be God's friend. God bless your face with His. Hi, welcome to this quick little Bible study and uh, testimony of like the five dimensions or realms of hell, so to speak. Um, I just put a quick post on my Facebook and it seemed like a lot of people went off on me. And So I, you know me, I like to just dive in wherever there's... I've always asked the Lord, send me to the darkest place, God, and He would. And He would send me to the darkest places and I saw I could just shine the light of Christ into the area. And uh, like the streets, I went right onto the streets and saw the power of God manifest. God broke my heart for His broken heart for the lost and He started reeling them all in. And now it's it's like I just see all these th false doctrines, all these people chewing on the knowledge of good and evil, and just they have no they have no none of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It's just all like everything's paid for, bro. There's no punishment. There's no nothing. There's no hell. <laughs> there's no God, you know. <laughs> and so I just wanted to like for those who actually believe the Bible and the scriptures and the message of Jesus Christ. Uh, you can dive right in here with me. I'm going to give a whole lot of scriptures. I'm going to be taking a bunch of stuff that I learned through this. But first off, as a disclaimer, nobody taught me about hell. Holy Spirit taught me. No man taught me. I Later on, I did the study and I found out the scriptures that about hell. I mean, I've always seen it through the Bible. The first time I read through the entire Bible from cover to cover in six months, my first half a year of being a Christian, born again, believer, <laughs> born of the Spirit so I can hear the Spirit. <laughs> anyway, so like, oh, I should start two decades ago, I was like, man, I wasn't even, a, I was a believer, like I would repent and then I would just like fall back into the world. And I remember like I was struggling, I had to get away from these friends because they kept pulling me back into the world. You know, it was that, uh, yeah, anyways, so I went to this meeting one time with my mother. She brought me to her chat, church, and uh, I can't even remember what was going on. All I remember is like after the service, we're all standing in a circle. We're just praying, and uh, I don't even remember what we were praying about. We just started praying. Okay, let's just get together. I guess this was the traditional thing. They would just stand around, get to, you know, minister to people if they have prayer needs or whatever. But we're all standing in a circle holding hands. And as I felt the holy presence of God just come into the place and then my spiritual eyes just open and I saw one of my family members burning in hell. And I started crying. I didn't say anything. I just started bawling my eyes because it was, I just saw them in agony. To see someone that you love in that condition, just it breaks your heart. And then I heard the pastor's words say, yes, we don't want any of our loved ones to go to that place and I'm like how does he know what I'm seeing and uh, it just blew me away that those who are spiritual can discern the things of the spirit who are sensitive to God who is spirit 
and basically this guy was so tight with God that he could see what I was seeing, what the Holy Spirit was showing me, and it blew my it blew me away. And uh, that was just one instance where nobody knew, just me and God. Holy Spirit was teaching me the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And uh, later on, years later on, uh, I began leading worship in this little small congregation at maybe, I don't know, 30 or so people. That <laughs> every Friday, I would, or yeah, Fridays and uh, Tuesdays and Sundays, I, I would lead worship on the Sundays. And then my friend came here before we had the pre-service prayer. And he comes up to me. He was like my best friend. And he, uh, at this particular time in my, in my life right now, all my, fr my best friends are invisible. Hallelujah. <laughs> Holy Spirit. So he came up to me. He's like, Chris, you got to pray for me. I'm like, sure, man. What's up? He's like, I can't tell you. You just got to pray for me. <laughs> okay. You're going to tell Fine. Okay. So I just began, I closed my eyes and I, just, I put my hands on him and I started praying in the Holy Spirit. Because th at this time I, I was just And then I just went into this vision and I saw, again, I saw this man falling and he was falling into hell. And, uh, and I stopped and said, you know, what's going on? I see a man and he's falling into hell. What is going on? And he's like, oh. Like his eyes widen, he's like, this must be the Lord. God asked me to go raise this man from the dead at a, you know, at this funeral thing. I'm like, well, you better obey God. <laughs> and so the point is, I didn't know. I didn't know that he never told me anything. Holy Spirit showed me that. And it was a, it's a literal place. I'm going to go into the scriptures. There's five compartments or departments of departed spirits. And I'm going to go into the scriptures. And I'll even, I even have three dreams <laughs> about, about hell. One of them, I'll share this with you real quickly, is this, this whore. I was sitting in the church service. This whore came up to me. I didn't know she was a whore. <laughs> she puts her arm around me like this, sitting on this, these bleacher things. These, she's like, Lord, is this the one that is to marry me? I'm like, whoa, woman, you know, how about a coffee? You know, <laughs> I didn't say that. Like, I'm just like staring at her. And uh, I gave her a list. I said, listen, man, if you want, if you want to marry me, you got to match this list. And I gave her the Proverbs 31. <laughs> Sat down straight, man. This is this is this is the list you got. You got to match up to. Because <laughs> I was a I was a newer believer at this time as well. And uh, and I could, there was something about this girl. I thought at first I thought, whoa, this is she's really in love with me. I feel this pull. And later I realized, oh, there's something seductive about that. It's a seducing spirit of lust. The reason I know that she's a whore is because she was already going around sleeping with this other guy well like I found I met him a year later that basically she well she was trying to pick me up anyways and then uh, that night I had a dream I don't know if it was that night or the night before I had this dream and uh, in this dream I went down this stairway and I went into this hot hellfire place and there was these arms that were trying to grab me it was weird. It, this was a parabolic dream symbolizing a truth. And all these hands were trying to grab me. And I was like, the, the, the struggle, the confusion to get out of that place. Like, how did I get out of here? Why did I even go down here? And then I saw a little door just at the end of like, if I could just get to that door at the end of this, 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 this chaos. I, I, might, I might be able to get out of here. And I just remember running just like in slow motion. You know, everything's in slow motion and you're trying to get out. And I just barely made it through this doorway. It was like, it was like shrinking almost. And I got through the doorway. And then I woke up. And I was like, God, what was that? And he says, that's Proverbs chapter 7. So I opened up my Bible and I went to Proverbs chapter 7. And Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27 says, her house is the way to hell. That word is Sheol. It's the realm of the departed spirits. Going down into the chambers of death. 
And if you read like the entire chapter of Proverbs 7, it talks about the whore. She calls on the streets to seduce men so that they would come into her house and die. They don't know that it, like it's like an ox, like an ox going to the slaughter. He doesn't know that it's like an arrow striking through the liver. Like a, he doesn't know. And many strong men have been slain and gone that way and died down into hell. Sheol, that's the the Hebrew word there. And we're going to get into all the words and the Hebrew words and what they mean. And Because people just say use the word like hell loosely. But there's actually, I have this like little Bible here. I want to, I want to read it out, some of the notes in here. Uh, this is five departments of the underworld of departed spirits. First one is Tataris. Tataris is the, it's where the angels who sinned are in chains and darkness. I'll just read it out to you. Tataris, it's found in 1 Peter 3.19, 2 Peter 2.4, and Jude 6-7. This is the prison of this prison is a special one for fallen angels who sinned before the flood. No human beings or demons ever go to this prison. So it's basically a place where they're held in chains until their judgment has come. And then they get are cast into the lake of fire. It's a literal place. <laughs> it's not symbolic. <laughs> there was literally angels who sinned, and that's where they're held captive in chains. And then number two is paradise. We can find that in Luke 16, 19 to 31, and also 23, verse 43. Paradise. This was the abode of the righteous after the after physical death, where they were held captive by the devil against their will until Christ conquered death. Hell and the grave. And is now empty of the righteous who go to heaven at death, since Christ captured the captives in hell and took them to heaven with him, then he ascended on high. And you can also see the uh, notes in Luke 16, 27, Ephesians 4, 8, and Hebrews 2, 15. Now, number three is just hell. Uh, this is the torment, uh, the torment compartment of Sheol, Hades. Okay, before I go into this, there's another word uh, in Hebrew, G-E-B-E-R, I believe it is, Gerber, I can't even know, I don't know how to say that. Um... Uh, Gerber, which means basically it's the grave. It's this place where they had like, uh, it's literally the grave. We'll go into that deeper later on, but Sheol is a different word. Uh, Torment of the Dead. Uh, where souls have always gone and will always go until the end of the millennium when the wicked will be brought out here to be reunited with their resurrected immortal bodies and cast into the lake of fire for eternity. See bodies, oh yeah, whatever, that's in Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Okay, there's the abyss or bottomless pit. We can look it up, you can find that in Luke chapter 8, verse 26 to 31, Romans 10, 7, Revelation 9, verse 1 to 3, Revelation 11, uh, Revelation 17, Revelation 20. This is the abode of demons and some angelic beings. No human soul or spirit ever go to the abyss. It's the Old Testament equivalent of Abaddon. And is translated destruction. See Job 26, 5 to verse 6. Job 28, verse 22. Job 31, 12. Psalm 88, verse 11. Proverbs 15, 11. Proverbs 27, 20. And number five is the lake of fire. I mean, these are all the departments of departed spirits. I'm not talking about the grave. It's not talking about the grave. That word is G-E-B-R. I don't know how to say that. Gerber. <laughs> we'll call it Gerber. Anyways, but number five is the lake of fire. This is the eternal hell and perdition of all fallen angels, demons, and wicked men. It's found in Revelation 20, verse 6, 11 uh, through 15, Revelation 21, verse 8, Revelation 22, verse 15. It is the same as Gehenna. Oh, that's another word. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Of note uh, in Luke 12. Okay. It is the final hell prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, verse 41. And is eternal in duration. Isaiah 66, verse 22 to 24. Matthew 25, verse 46. Revelation 14, 9, verse Verse 9 to 14, Revelation 9, verse 20, Revelation 20, verse 10 to 15. Okay, uh, hell. So basically, 
those are some of the words. Uh, there's 88 facts proving hell is not the grave. I'm just going to go into a couple of these facts just so you know that it's a different word. Uh, in scripture, Sheol, Hades, hell is never the place of the body, so to speak, the flesh. Q-U-E-B-R-M-N-E-M-E-I-O-N. Cuber, I don't know how to say it, Cubert, Cubert, <laughs> Cuber Menem grave is never the place of the soul. Like I said, it's the place where the body goes, the flesh goes. Uh, but uh, Sheol or Hades, hell, is where the departed spirits go. Number two, Sheol is never in the plural. Cuber is plural, 38 times, and singular, 74 times. Number three, Sheol is never located on earth. Cuber is located on the earth 73 times. Four, the body never goes to Sheol. The body is mentioned as going to Cuber 75 times. If you want uh, to know the notes that I'm taking from, it's just from this Bible that I got like, I don't know, about maybe seven or eight years ago. It's called uh, the Dake. The Dake, D-A-K-E, Annotated Reference Bible. It's got the entire King James in it and a bunch of reference notes and it just saves me all the time of looking it all up myself. I have looked it up myself, but this this has it all in order for you. And uh, I'll just keep on going a little bit more so to give you a basic understanding. Uh, number five, individual Sheol never mentioned. Individuals and in Cuber mentioned 79 times. Number six, man never puts anyone into Sheol. Man puts bodies into the Cuber. Q E B E R 40 times. Man never digs or makes a Sheol. Man digs and makes a Cuber 51 times. Man has never seen a Sheol on earth. He has seen a Cuber 51 times. God alone puts men into Sheol. It's written in Numbers 16.30, 1 Samuel 2.6, Ezekiel 31.16, and Luke 16, verse 19 to 31. God alone will bring men out of Sheol for Samuel 2.6 and Revelation 20.11 to 15. Hellbound men descend, that's Isaiah 5, 14, and go down into the lower parts of the earth into Sheol at death. That's Genesis 3, 37, verse 35, 42, 40, 38, and Genesis 44, 29, and Numbers. There's just tons of scriptures. It's all scriptures. You can go into it deeply if, at your own leisure if you want. Uh, anyways, there, there's 88 points. Uh, let's see. Paradise compartment of the Sheol. Okay. The torment compartment of Sheol is the lowest part of Sheol, even lower than paradise, and is therefore cannot be the grave since Deuteronomy 32, verse 22, Psalms 86, 13. Uh, yeah. So some examples of using hell for grave. Uh, examples using hell for grave. Other. Here's some ridiculous conclusions. Okay. Jacob set his pillar upon her hell. That's Genesis 35, 30. <laughs> That's supposed to be her grave, not her hell. In my hell, which I have digged. That's Genesis 50, verse 5. I guess someone could do that, you know. <laughs> you reap what you sow, you know. <laughs> Whosoever touches a hell shall be unclean seven days. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know, man. Listen, the reason I'm, I'm doing all this study in hell because I need I want to be perfectly balanced. Jesus taught about hell from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. It's full of references to hell. You know, you call it was, you know, I've been to heaven a couple times. I've seen glimpses of hell a couple times, just in very small parts. But uh. There's this man named Bill Weiss. He gives you all the scriptures. He goes deep into detail because God took him to hell to show him, to, to basically release through this man the, the revelation what hell is like. What are we saved from? If there's no hell, then what are we saved from? Everything wicked and abominable, uh, all destruction and evil comes from the fall, the hell. 
everything good and perfect comes from God, even heaven. You know, like all the sickness, all the cancer. Just go watch his, go watch that guy's video. It's amazing. Bill Weiss, 23 minutes in hell. Uh, here. Yeah, one of the people, sometimes people just say hell is figurative. You know, they'll say like, yeah, hell is just a state of mind. Well, I, the angels are trapped in a state of mind that sinned? No. That's a literal place. The scriptures say that, uh, that there is actually a place prepared for the devil and his angels. I don't remember the exact scripture, but it's, it's where... It's a place that was prepared. I think it's in Matthew somewhere, I believe. For the devils and his angels. And, and again in Matthew, like he'll say to us, depart. Like if you do not know Jesus Christ is your Savior, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You know, into everlasting destruction. The only salvation we have is in Jesus Christ. Everything... Like he, basically, if you want to go to a place where you want nothing to do with God, there is a place prepared for everyone who doesn't want anything to do with God. It's where He's removed His peace. He's removed His presence. He, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. He's removed everything good. And everything apart from God is left there. Which is utter torments, wickedness, where the worm doesn't die. I remember there's a scripture that God uh, spoke to me to speak to a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, it's like, I, it was that scripture that says, the sting of death is sin. It didn't say the sting of sin is death. The sting of death is sin. What does that mean? That means what after you've rejected eternal life, because there's life in no other than Jesus Christ, the sting of death is your sin that continually stings you throughout eternity in hopelessness because you've rejected eternal life. There is eternal, like salvation is given in no other name than the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. You call upon Him, you reject your sin, and you receive His price that He paid for you. You believe in your heart that He's been raised from the dead. And He is your salvation. And you will experience Him you know, in, in glory. <laughs> you know, It's as simple as this. Let's just, let's just pray. If you don't know God, and all you do is they say, God, I believe that you, God the Father, I believe that you raised your son from the dead and that his precious blood washes away my sin. And I put all my faith and hope and trust in you to save me from my sin. God, come into my heart and change my life. You are my Savior. You are my Master. I give you my life. I give you the reins of my heart. Lead me and guide me into all truth. And I thank you for the Holy Spirit who will lead me and guide me into all truth. I give my life to you and I forsake all my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. And then you just follow God. Just follow God. God is spirit. You must be born again of the spirit to even enter the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again of the spirit, out of your sinful nature and into the spirit of God. And anyways, this is just a quick little teaching on hell. I just wanted to throw out a couple little references and... I like to go where people get, you know, all triggered and manifest on me because I know that that's, they're, they're getting triggered by the truth and the truth will set them free. And there is no other truth but the spirit of truth breathing in the words that have been already written for us. And he may also whisper things into our heart because, you know, every, we don't live on bread. We only live, <laughs> I can't even talk anymore, Holy Spirit. I just kind of woke up and I wanted to make this quick video. You know, we only live by the words that come from the mouth of God. I might do a more in-depth study on it and give you all the scriptures and read the actual scriptures out loud, but I just wanted to make this real quick video. I hope you're blessed. I'll probably do a, a video on heaven next, give my testimony and uh, some of the scriptures to show you what it's like so that you have an anchor for your soul to pull you in. 
so that you can lock, get locked in and loaded in, in the spirit of faith and just go be with your Savior. Hallelujah. In substance. God bless your face with abundance of grace. I hope you're thirsty today. Just grab the substance of Christ and drink them through your heart. Just by faith, just open up your heart wider and drink in the manifest presence of God. That's your life. When you drink in the manifest presence of God, when you drink Christ into your heart, wow, <laughs> honey will come out of your mouth. You know, whatever goes into you will come out the substance thereof. So fill your heart full of Christ and you know, out of the eater will come forth sweetness. That revelation, honey, that enlightens the eyes, makes you wise. <laughs> It's like buying eye salve upon your eyes. It's getting eye salve upon your eyes. It's like you, the scales of pride fall off if you, as you receive the humility of Christ through your heart. Because he, whatever you take in, whatever measure you eat upon of Christ, His nature comes into you. It comes into your heart. God put, you know, wisdom in Solomon's heart, so He put a piece of Himself inside of Solomon. You know, true wisdom comes from God. It comes from God. It's a, a manifestation of what God is like. Ejected into your heart. And then it comes forth out of you through your speech and through your daily activities. So it's why Sol Solomon could wisely discern and judge God's people. Well, that was wisdom. You know, wisdom is the beginning <laughs> of knowledge, right? Or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge? Oh, whatever. But with all you're getting, get understanding. If you're going to get wisdom, you got to get the spirit of understanding. And if you want all these things, you need to, first of all, have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Not fear from the Lord, that's a demon. But the fear of the Lord, it's His fear in you. It's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And I've talked about the spirit of the fear of the Lord in other videos, and it's absolute awe, wonder, and amazement at how merciful he is and that he doesn't just destroy me doesn't destroy us anyways to the, there's so many things that happened today and recently and I don't even know what to talk about so first of all let's just get let's get real let's drink the heart of Christ let's drink his heart into our heart Let's peak like David where we pursued him all the days of our life. If you're breathing, if you have breath, you have the ability to praise God. And the more you praise God is the more you magnify him. And that way your spirit can rejoice in God your Savior. If you're not praising God, you're probably praising the things of man. <laughs> oh, whatever. So let's just take our focus off the natural realm, place it upon God. And let God brood through your spirit, soul, and body into the natural realm. It's the same message all throughout all my videos. Let's let's get pretty jacked up in the glory. Let's get let's feed upon Christ. Let's feast upon Him. If you're thirsty, whosoever wills, let him come to the rivers of living water and drink freely. If you will it, you can go by the precious blood of Jesus. He paid for. He's your admission fee right into the glory. <laughs> you go right through Jesus. He purchased us by the precious blood, His precious blood. Well, what did He purchase? Did He just, you know, forgive us for our sins and then we just live as beasts? He purchased us. He bought us so that we could be with Him where He is. Where is He? John 17 says where He is. Father, I pray that they would be with me where I am also, that they may behold my glory. You want to behold the glory of God? Be with Him where He is. How do you know? Well, you sit with Christ in heavenly places. So just ask Him, God, where, what is this place where I sit with you now? I want to feast on Christ. I want to drink your blood. I want to eat your flesh. I want to feast upon your heart, God. <laughs> <laughs> as you feast upon mine hallelujah you know the Lord seeks 
worshipers, right? The Father is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth because He feasts upon you. He feasts upon your worship. Just like you feast upon Him, it's not cannibalism. It's like you're drinking in His words. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's not cannibalism. It's communion. You're taking Him into yourself. Into the very depths of the core of your being. Into your spirit, man. To, into your soul. And even into your body. You're receiving the nutrients of Christ. And the more you feast upon Him, He's the Lion. You know, He's the Lamb that was slain, but He's also the Lion. Inside of Him... There's that honey, the honey from the rock, the honey of His presence, the sweetness of God, the goodness of God. It's actually tangible. And you just feast upon Him. I was driving my car today. I listened to the book of Revelation twice today. Look, I'm not, I'm not arrived anywhere. I'm, on this, I'm like a little baby. Just learning from my spirit father, who is God. <laughs> He's the one who teaches me. And I can listen to all these other teachers, but if I don't hear what his spirit is saying, I don't understand. It's only when I get hit by the spirit that I understand. <laughs> you know? His words are spirit and his words are life. When that life hits me, that life is imparted into me. And then I can taste it, I can see it, and then I can manifest it, and then I'll understand it. I can't. I don't understand things up here. I might think I do, but that means I just think I do. It's not true reality. The substance thereof is the reality of it. And uh, I live some experiential. I have some experiential substance that I experience today. I was feast. The reason I put on Revelation is because it's the revelation of Jesus. I, I'm like God, teach me about you. I want to learn about you. It's the revelation of Jesus. Thank you for all the mysteries, all these wonderful things, but it's you I want to learn about. And as I was listening to it, it just jumped out through the audio the first time I went through it, and he was talking about the seven lamps before his throne and I remember like and just as he said that Matthew came into my mind the lamp of the body is the eye which you see the lamp of the body is the eye how do you see well the seven spirits that are before his throne are the seven lamps that are before his throne the seven lamps that enlighten us a lamp is something that is to be lit the lamp in the old testament was never to go out symbolic of what it, perfection is. It's before the throne of the perfect God. You per, what, what perfection is, is having the seven blazing spirits of God just lit up out through the whole body of Christ. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. What is that perfection? It's before His throne. He's constantly just manifesting wisdom, manifesting revelation, manifesting like all of the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He's manifesting these constantly. He's a life-giving spirit. Perfection is when you're a life-giving spirit, like your Father in Heaven. It's His Spirit coming through you. So you're manifesting wisdom. You're manifesting the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You're manifesting the spirit of understanding. It's coming through you because you're just like a like your father in heaven you're made in the image of God <laughs> you know and uh, that was really encouraging because that's what I'm growing into I'm going to be like my father <laughs> I'm going to have the seven spirit not just me we <laughs> the body of Christ is going to be so powerful manifesting the seven spirits of God through her gates continuously continual manifestation of wisdom like it doesn't matter so that way no one gets puffed up no one gets prideful they know it's not my wisdom it's not my understanding it's not my revelation it's just the seven spirits of God brooding through a yielded body all this body does it yields to my soul and my spirit I, I tell it you go this way I want to move my hand up and my hand goes up what does a body do the body of Christ he governs the body 
When he says, go hug that person, you just go over, you hug that person, and boom! The life of God hits that person. Because wherever the will of God is, that demons are dying and life is being manifest. <laughs> Darkness flees and light just comes in like, like a fresh breeze. Hallelujah. And uh, so I got real excited about that. I'm driving my car. I played it the second time. There was another revelation. I can't even remember right now. But uh, I'm driving in my car. All of a sudden, this comes upon me. And I could feel like honey just filling my mouth. And then the understanding coming. Like it, when Jonathan dipped his stick, remember Saul in the Old Testament said, like, uh, cursed is anyone if they eat food today. And Jonathan, his son, did not hear the command that Saul gave and he just took the tip of his stick he dipped it in honey and it says the Bible says that his eyes were enlightened he was strengthened and uh, that enlightening just comes from feasting upon the honey from the rock it was a rebuke to Israel he said if you would have opened your mouth I would have filled it with honey from the rock I think it's Psalm 80 or 81 or around there or somewhere. I don't remember the exact psalm, but it was like a rebuke. Open your mouth. So I don't know. I didn't know what I was going to say before I pressed record. I just kind of pressed record. and I just knew I wanted to drink more of Christ. I want more of that honey from the lion, you know? Samson just <laughs> ripped it apart with his hands. Hallelujah, it's symbolic of the world is going to like nail Jesus. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? But out of his death comes forth the sweetness. What came out of him when he died on the cross? Water and blood. It was like he's birthing his bride out of the side. The blood of Jesus that washes away the sins of the world. It dripped right down to the world. Off of the cross, right onto the world. His blood touched the ground touch the dust of the earth to redeem us back to himself because it was the father's will so out of the lion of the tribe of Judah came forth the sweetness the rivers of living water the bride came out of his side hallelujah to walk with him In the cool of the day heat of battle in this world and the world to come for eternity we'll be walking with our God in our God married to him as his intimate lover listen you can't even feed the sheep unless you love Jesus the measure that you love Jesus your love relationship with him that's the measure that you can feed the sheep where else does you get the manna from <laughs> you're like a bird you know when they go and catch something and then they just put it in the mouths of their little chicklets or whatever you're just feasting on Christ in your heart. You're feasting on Him. And then you have the goods inside of you and you release the goodie bag. It's whatever Christ in you, whatever form He's measured in you, that measure goes to His people. That's why He said to Peter, Do you love me, Peter? And Peter's like, yeah. Do you love me, Peter? Yeah. Do you love me, Peter? Yeah. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Feed them. Because the key is in the love relationship. When you love and worship God, you're receiving manna, that hidden manna, <laughs> so that you can feed the sheep. You can't feed them the knowledge of good and evil. You can only feed them revelation, which you've seen and experienced. That's why Jesus said, we say what we have seen and heard and stuff like that. I only say what I hear. Because he was releasing words of spirit and life. And it's only the spirit that brings life. Your not natural knowledge of good and evil, it brings death. Because there's no spirit of life in there to bring, to break anything, to break anyone free. Anyone can quote a scripture, but who can manifest the spirit? You know, I'd rather have like just one, one verse in the Bible that radiates in my spirit that I could live it out and manifest it into the world then have the entire Bible memorized 
Because that one verse is more powerful than the entire Bible memorized in a Pharisee mind. Because it will only bring death. And that other one, Scripture...